Pros Pro. Pros Pro. Bros Pro. Bros Bro. Step Bro? Step bro, oh, no. I'm home. No! no! Many people on my Discord and live stream have been asking about this relatively unknown string manufacturer called Pros Pro, and one of their most popular strings is the Interceptor. By the way, I do have a public Discord that is live, so if there is any question that I can't get to down in the comment section below, feel free to hop onto the server and very many friendly people will point you in the way. So, you guys voted on the Pro's Pro Interceptor? Here we go. Pro's Pro Interceptor only comes in one color and they call it lime and it is the ugliest shade of yellow I have ever seen in my life. I had to order this tennis string from a North American retailer called Big T Tennis because when I went on to the Pro's Pro manufacturing website which listed everything in euros, they weren't able to ship it to Wisconsin in the United States. The retailer in North America was selling this reel of Pro's Pro Interceptor for about $77, and that's the full 660 reel. So that equates, if you break it down, based on racket strong, it is about $5.50 per racket. But if you're in Europe, which some of you are, it sells for about 24 euros per 660 reel. And for those of you that only understand freedom units, that equates to about 29 or $30 per reel. So if you're in Europe, you're able to string with Pro's Pro Interceptor at about $1.80 per set, freedom units. And that is significantly cheaper than my favorite value string, Isospeed Baseline Control. But again, this only works for the Pro's Pro Interceptor if you're in Europe. Reminder that one set of the Pro's Pro Interceptor came to me in the same way that you guys got your drugs in high school and college. It came in a sandwich bag. Unfortunately, it did not fit in a pill bottle. Similarly, the Isospeed Baseline Control, which is my favorite consumer-friendly string I've reviewed so far, I'll leave a link to that in this top left corner if you guys want to take a look at it, has a similar story where it only is sold in reels. They don't sell it in sets. So, let's see how it compares to the other value strings I've reviewed on this channel. But, enough about the specs. Let's talk about how this actually performs on the tennis court. Sorry, sorry. From the baseline, the power for the interceptor was pretty average in all honesty. Uh, the spin was, however, absolutely lacking from the top spin department. This is the most unfriendly string when it comes to spin potential, just next to the Kirschbaum Pro Line 2. So if you guys are heavy top spin hitters, especially from the baseline, you might already want to look somewhere else for a polyester that's relatively cheap. So it's the second day. 
on court, the second play test with Pro's Pro's Interceptor. And initially, I really didn't like it at first. For the very first day, I would say the first actually like five or 10 minutes, it felt way too stiff, way too hollow. So it has that generic cheap tennis string kind of feeling. But after about five to 10 minutes of hitting mini tennis and going back to the baseline with Brian, it actually started to loosen up a little bit. However, as of now, it still does feel a little bit hollow. And one thing to notice too is, if you guys have ever played with the Pro Stro Interceptor, the yellow version, to be honest, I don't know if they have any other colors. Brian and I were commenting that the paint on it was just a little bit weird because it was getting marked black and a little bit of orange, right? Probably from the tennis ball that no other string, I think, has ever actually done. So it must be a different color scheme or a different um, chemical compound they use to color the Pro's Pro Interceptor with the yellow version at least. But after it loosened up for a bit, it felt a little bit better. Still feels really cheap, but that's not necessarily a bad thing given it's a more generic brand and probably a brand no one of you guys have ever really heard of, except for the five or six people that recommended me to try some of the Pro's Pro tennis string lines, which I definitely don't regret, so thank you for that. Not surprisingly, the underspin is pretty damn good. This doesn't really come as a surprise because it is a round copolyester and round strings tend to be better with finesse shots and underspin. And this holds true for the interceptor as well. Feel, this has surprisingly good feel, even if it is a cold polyester that's round and not shaped. I felt comfortable with short rollers and drop shots even from the baseline when I was in seemingly defensive positions to draw my opponent a little bit off guard. As for comfort from the baseline, this one is a little bit weird, so I wanna talk about it in a little bit more detail than most of the strings I've reviewed so far on this channel. Normally, if a string is considered to be comfortable, it's soft and has good ball pocketing. This string actually doesn't fall into that little rule. This string from the get-go feels pretty hollow and actually somewhat stiff. However, after a 30-minute break-in period or so, it felt a little bit better. It does soften up a bit and does not feel nearly as stiff as it initially was. But for some reason, the ball pocketing was still absolutely garbage. The ball pocketing was very similar to the Pro Hurricane Tour, now called the RPM Hurricane. So it was weird that a soft string like this after the break-in period just had absolute garbage ball pocketing. So if you guys are baseliners, please be wary of that. Three, two. Power for the first serves were absolutely fantastic. I felt very comfortable adding as much pop and power onto my first flat serves as much as humanly possible without any fear of the ball sailing way too long or clipping the net tape or hitting the bottom of the net, which does happen from time to time because I'm not the best server in the world. For spin serves, the power was actually, let's see, how do I say it? For spin serves, the power was average at best. And this really isn't surprising because just from the baseline, it didn't give too much spin potential. It was actually you know, very disappointing. For the spin potential for the serves, it was serviceable. It was a little bit better than the spin potential from the baseline. The kick serves weren't really good at all, but the slices were similar to the baseline slices I mentioned earlier, were serviceable at best for around cold poly. The feel for the serves with the string wasn't the best, but it was serviceable. Again, no pun intended. And for the comfort, it didn't give me any arm problems at all, even with a racket that has been giving me arm problems, my E-Zone 98. So no complaints on the comfort department there for the serves. The volleys and touch shots were a little bit better than expected from a very cheap generic string such as the interceptor. The interceptor gave surprisingly amounts of pop at the net even if the ball wasn't coming at you super hard with a lot of pace and or spin. And the feel was decent given that the ball pocketing wasn't there at all. 
Comfort for the valleys with the string were pretty good. Nothing to complain, nothing to write home about. And the finesse shots were actually pretty damn good for short angle shots and drop volleys at the stop of a dime. This is a pretty damn good string choice for those finesse players and possibly even servant volleyers and double specialists out there that don't rely too much on spin potential, mainly top spin. By the way, if you guys have any good recommendations on string measuring tools when it comes to tension, please let me know in the comment section down below because this Gamma Turna string meter is definitely not doing the job whatsoever. And I really don't want to use a phone app where I'll just whack my string bed with like a pencil or some sort of awning. I just want something super accurate and I'm willing to pay top dollar for an instrument like that to give you guys better information when it comes to tennis string maintenance for polyesters. Overall, this string was just, eh, kind of like your first date, meeting someone on Tinder, it was okay. With the good finesse shots and that awkward feeling of not being super stiff after the 30 minute break-in period, but the absolute garbage ball pocketing. This is typically what you would think of when it comes to a round co-polyester that's extremely generic and has no marketing, at least in the US, whatsoever. This is my second to last play test of any type of string with my E-Zone 98, the 2020 version, because I did switch to the head Radical Pro, the 2018 version, because it's cheap, I like the paint job, and the Head Radical Pro is not giving me any type of arm problems whatsoever. So I do have one more play test with the EZO 98s, that's called the T1 Black Knight, which will be up relatively shortly, I hope, given I do this on a part-time job basis. And please hit like and subscribe for more original tennis content and please click that notification bell so you guys get notified when something does come up as soon as possible. And I will be going to Chagrin Falls, Ohio to play in the 4-5, 18 and over singles men's tournament. And if I do well in that, I will be going to nationals in 2021, which I believe is in Arizona sometime around April. I will do, I'll be doing a daily vlog on that and uploading it daily, if not multiple times a day while I'm on that trip, Thursday through Sunday night. And as always, happy hitting.